Стой, Песик, а мы сейчас это, русалки позвоним. Хай сюда еду. Давайте назад носите. Квадрик, блядь, назад гони. Вы что, блин, вообще? Мы, сука, вам помогаем, блядь, с первых дней. Вы что делаете, блядь, а? Как вам, блядь, не стыдно, сука? О, Квадрик выгнали, блядь, все повыребали нахер. А что, блядь, тушенки нету, сука, голодаете или что, блядь? Бессовестные, блядь. И в хату залезли, прикинь, в хате еще повытягивали, блядь. Мы сейчас ВПшника, мы сейчас это, русалки позвоним, хай сюда еду, давайте назад носите. Квадрик, блядь, назад гони. Вы что, блин, вообще? Мы, сука, вам помогаем, блядь, с первых дней, вы что делаете, блядь, а? Как вам, блядь, не стыдно, сука? О, Квадрик выгнали, блядь, все повыребали нахер. А что, блядь, тушенки нету, сука, голодаете или что, блядь? Бессовестные, блядь. И в хату залезли, прикинь, в хате еще повытягивали, блядь. President Volodymyr Zelensky personally arrived at the German airbase Ramstein, where the 24th meeting of the contact group on the provision of military assistance to Ukraine, which includes more than 50 countries, is taking place. It was the first time that Zelensky joined the gathering of defense ministers at the US airbase Ramstein in Western Germany. In his opening remarks, the Ukrainian leader spoke about the successes of the operation in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, where the Ukrainian armed forces took control of 1,300 square kilometers of territory, and the Russian army lost about 6,000 people killed and wounded. According to the president, this prevented the occupiers from advancing on the Sumy region and slowed down their advance in Donetsk. He noted that the operation in Kursk showed the true interests of Putin, who justified the invasion of Ukraine by protecting his people, but was unable or unwilling to do so on Russian territory. Zelensky said that Russian troops abandoned a significant portion of the territory upon seeing the approach of Ukrainian forces, while other areas were taken under control by Ukrainian forces during combat. And we have already started operating F-16s. Thank you for this support, Secretary Austin. And to you, partners, they strike down missiles and drones. They are very efficient, but they are few. You know that. We need a much stronger fleet of F-16s, and I have proposals that I will say when the press leaves, he said. Zelensky also called on partners to hand over the promised air defense systems as soon as possible and to change their minds about long-range missile strikes deep into Russia against its airfields and military bases. Head of the Pentagon, Lloyd Austin, announced at the beginning of the 24th meeting of the Ramstein Group on support for Ukraine that the United States will provide Ukraine with another package of military aid worth $250 million to continue countering Russian aggression. The head of the American Defense Department did not say what types of weapons would be transferred. He only said that the next batch would meet the urgent needs of the Ukrainian armed forces and would be delivered to the battlefield as soon as possible. The Ramstein meeting is taking place just as Russia is yet again ramping up aerial strikes against Ukrainian cities, underscoring Ukraine's need for faster air defense deliveries. Moscow's troops also continue their pressure in Donetsk Oblast, namely toward a key logistics hub of Pokrovsk. The presence of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region allowed Russians to take a new look at the Russian Federation, noting the charm of life without the control of Putin's authorities. A video recorded by a Russian in the Kursk region liberated from the Russian regime has appeared on the internet. While recording the video, the man admitted that he had gone over to the Ukrainian side and felt relieved after the Ukrainian armed forces arrived. He does not want to live in Russia, where murderers rule, emphasizing that he does not accept the accusation of treason since he considers those who serve Putin's regime traitors. I want all of Russia to be like this, without Putin, he noted. 
Some residents in the Ukrainian-occupied zone are oblivious to the Kremlin's responsibility for their plight and appear to genuinely believe that President Vladimir Putin is unaware of what is happening in Kursk, according to the Center for European Policy Analysis. Natalia, one resident of Kursk, along with other Ukrainian and Western journalists, has been accused by the Russian FSB of illegally crossing the border to report on areas controlled by Ukraine. Needless to say, this is a predictably myopic Kremlin interpretation of legality, not least because Russia has spent 10 years sending armed forces across the border of a state whose existence it has long recognized. She doesn't care about the charges, she said, but worries about possible consequences elsewhere. I only hope other countries will not act on any decisions from a terrorist state because I still travel around the world, she said. Primarily, I do it to speak on behalf of Ukraine and its people. I have been to Canada, the US and Italy to remind them there is a war in Ukraine. She wants to be sure that the world will not be searching for me if Russia hands this case over to Interpol, she said. We didn't just go as journalists to see what was happening there. We went to accompany humanitarian aid for the residents of those areas. We ensured that Ukraine adhered to the Geneva Conventions. In any case, a criminal case in Russia against someone in Ukraine, it can only be seen as a compliment, not a threat, she added.